Okay. Hey, superstars. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, I did not want to edit a video this week, so I got my buddy Four Leaf on with me, and we're going to do something kind of fun here. We got a little collaboration going on. How you doing, Four Leaf? What is up, YouTube? Hey, thanks for clicking, guys. Certainly appreciate that. And happy St. Patrick's Day. This is my day. And I'm super excited uh, to be doing this with Scott. What a great idea. I hope you guys uh, are strapped in because we are going to blow your minds. All right, Scott, tell them what we're up to. Well, now you built it up too much. No, no, it's good. It's big. <laughs> All right. So I love those um, contests where you have to do a VR uh, with a, um, a lineup that you make. So um, I believe the last one that I saw was RJ Collect Sets. And he had like make your favorite lineup out of your favorite team. And it's got me thinking, um, what if you made a lineup that was two people's favorite teams? So today we're going to make a lineup out of players who have played for both the Indians slash Guardians and the Red Sox. So um, I've made my lineup and Four Leaf has made his and we're going to reveal those now. All right, I'm going to go first. And I'm super pumped because you guys probably don't know this, but I oftentimes look at my favorite team and, and uh, there's a thing that you can look in at base, baseball reference where you can put somebody else's team in. And I oftentimes try to find players for gifts and things that play for my team and whoever's team I'm getting a gift for. So I was like, heck yeah, this is a great idea. So I do this all the time. And uh, oh, the other rule, Scott, is we got to have a card for each player. It's not just a lineup. Right, right, right. Yeah, we've heard to tell them that. Which means we were going to do this a couple of weeks ago, but I just can't find all my cards because I'm like not organized and Scott just really is. Uh, but anyway, I found them all. Actually, uh, I thought my Conlon collection was going to really make this thing go and I couldn't find it in the beginning. And then there wasn't as many as I thought there were on there. So I had to go digging, digging, digging. Anyway, I'm going to start with, uh, oh, let's let them know. We're going to do five starting pitchers. Right. And one relief, and then we'll go through the position players uh, as as they are, three outfielders, and a DH uh, because, we're, hey, we're in the American League, right? Right. Uh, wait, well, both leagues everybody, get, everybody gets a DH now, right? Right. right. Holy moly. Home runs for days. Anyway, um, all right, I'm going to start it off. So, again, these players played for both. Uh, my Boston Red Sox and Scott's uh, Indian slash Guardians. Okay, I am going to start it off with uh, pitcher number one. I think we all just have to agree. Get a little shine on that uh, light there. But here's a Cy Young. I had a couple of different cards. I had some numbered ones. But I picked this one out. Oh, by the way, you'll notice I've got some nice green uh, top loaders. <laughs> It's coming off as a funny color because I'm in the hotel and uh, I get some yellow lighting today. But uh, this is a, uh, a Cy Young from, I think it's Fleer. Anyway, okay, that's pitcher number one. That's a no-brainer. Hall of Fame, Triple Crown, you know, World Series winner, yada, yada, yada. Uh, then it gets a little, a little dicey because there's a lot of good pitchers here that I had to pick through. But I really wanted to have uh, some pitchers, just in case we had to play some old school pitchers that could hit. So I got a West Farrell here. Boston Red Sox pitcher on this card. This is from that Conlon collection. So there's Wes Farrell. And Wes Farrell, I think, uh, I don't have all his stats in front of me. I got some notes here. But his war was 60.1. And for me, and a uh, really good hitting pitcher. So for me, that was a, a really good one, even though he doesn't have to hit. Uh, if for some reason, uh, because our rosters are so short, I need somebody else to hit. Somebody gets hurt, I got Wes Farrell. Uh, also, another great hitting pitcher, and I, I picked him that way uh, with a war of 40 was Smokey Joe Wood. It's a pretty cool card right there. Good old Smokey Joe Wood. That's an upper yep. deck classics. Uh, nice picture there. Got him in the Red Sox jersey. So Smokey Joe Wood. Now, this is Gotta actually the card. Joe. Huh? Gotta love like, Smokey Joe. Yeah, how do you not love a guy named Smokey Joe? Like, <laughs> Smokey, I mean, I'll have two of those. Anyway, this is the card that I knew I had and I could not find for like a month. I don't know how long we've been planning this, but it felt like at least a month. 
Uh, but this is an autograph. Luis Tiant. Nice. Yeah. It's in the twins. It's a twins card though. But hey, that's this is right, right after that's right after he was in Cleveland. Because so you're the collect to connect guy, and these cards not only you know connect us both, but other YouTubers as well. Yeah, we got a like Dustin so and Blake and those guys. Dustin you know. and Blake represented there. Okay, so that's four starters. And Tian was just you know, Tian doesn't get a lot of love, but uh his war was uh sixty six point one. That's pretty significant. So fairly dominant pitcher. Now, this one. Once you get down out of those guys, for me, it got a little funky, okay? And I ended up going with this guy because he was a good a good starting pitcher, not a huge war, only 15.6, not a large career, didn't, didn't compile a whole lot of things, um, but had a bunch of saves as well, okay? And mm -hmm. so I thought, man, this guy, if I needed him in the rotation, I could put him in for middle relief. If I had to. Okay. And that's Dick Raditz. So I could have him as a starter. I could have a middle relief and I could have him as a closer. If I needed him, if somebody got hurt. Nice. So Dick Raditz, Dick Raditz, great pitcher, great pitcher. Just didn't, just didn't probably have enough years in there to get it going. So there is my five starting uh, pitchers and I'll hold off on my uh, relief until you show yours. Okay. okay. So, so, so far we're we're, we're pretty, lined, pretty up. lined up. Really? We got, got Detton True Young. Young. Got to have him obviously. Got to have him. That's a that's a right. must. Look at that. You got West Farrell too. West Farrell. You got West Farrell in the Cleveland Uni. I got him in the Boston. Right. He threw the no-no with the, in the Cleveland Uni. From the Conlon collection also. Right. And Smokey Joe. Smokey Joe. Now, when he was with the Indians, um, they thought that they could, like, his arm was just dead after he left the Red Sox. And uh, I, think, I believe it was Tris Speaker that um, really encouraged them to bring him over. But uh, he couldn't pitch anymore. But I still have him as a pitcher. But he was kind of detrimental for them winning the 1920 World Series, which was kind of cool. As as a batter, as a batter, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smokey Joe, you look at you look at his stats, man. He's got great hitting stats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good play, good good play. We got Louis. Get out of town! Oh my God! If we have all the same players, then it's going to blow my mind. All uh, right. Well, you didn't, you didn't go for Dick we, Raditz. You didn't go for no, Dick Raditz. I, I I did not get Dick Raditz. I went with Big Sexy. Oh, big, sexy Bartolo Colon. That's a good choice. I had him on. I had him on, and uh, good war, forty-five point eight on his war. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the only thing I went like Raditz again. Colon was in for a long time, right? So he, he compiled lots of stats, right? So he's got right. good war. Raditz was really, really good for a short amount of time, and I really liked that it, that I could use him as middle relief for a state say as a save. So, but Cologne is, he was, he was, uh, I mean, I spent a lot of time on this Hemin and Han where I was going to go with it anyway. Okay. I, I dig it though. Man, we have to have right, some We're difference. close. I mean, four out of five is absolutely right, that's not bad. And I think we're going to be uh five out of six. Yeah. This one's pretty obvious. Our closer or my closer is the Eck. I got that one too. I think you gave me that card. I think I pretty did sure. too. I'm pretty sure he gave me that card, but I picked out something snazzy with a hologram. Can I get it to go? No, probably not. Oh, maybe. Now, that'd be cool if it was a Boston Red Sox in the hologram. I like the red jersey. I like the, really like the red Indians jerseys. Mm -hmm. Then and now. From Upper Deck. I'll tell you what, man. I've been going through my cards and sorting some stuff out. Upper Deck needs to get back into baseball. I don't know how we get convinced fanatics to do that. But Upper Deck had awesome cards in like the 90, late 90s and early 2000s. Anyway. Okay. Some of those sets were like 1,200 card sets. They're crazy. 
wow, it's nuts. But you know, they can stream streamline that a little bit. But they have yeah. just some really nice cards, man. I, it's like, oh, what card is this? This is really nice. And I flip it over, upper deck. Okay. Pitchers, 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 relief pitchers. My turn for catcher. Mm-hmm. Uh oh, you know what? Now's the time to open that package. I sent Scott a package. It's a secret package. Uh wait, hold on a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna show mine. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, originally, a lot of things going on at the catcher position. You know, Rick Cerrone, but eh, and Tony Pena. I mean, Tony Pena, great catcher. Uh, that was uh, he was my guy for a while. Uh, his ops plus uh, eighty four. WAR was twenty four point seven. But in the long run, and I went back and forth and back and forth on this one, but I ended up going with. Victor Martinez. All right. I and, dig it. And uh, here's an autographed uh, copy of that bad boy. I figured it's got some nice appeal here for some of those vintage guys. that got that gouty look. So Victor Martinez, I went, I went for Victor. Um, he was a heck of a hitter. He, yeah, he was, I, I wanted the bats. So I started to look, okay, if I'm going to make this lineup, I need hits, you know? And so Tony Pena just, he was good, but, wasn't a good as good of a bat, so I went with uh, Victor Martinez. Yep. All right. What do you got? All right. I really, really thought about Tony Pena because you know he's five time All Star, four yes. time Gold Glover, just excellent catcher. But I went in a different direction here. Moberg. Moberg, who's probably not the best catcher. He was a terrible ball player. But he was a spy, and how cool is that? Totally off my radar. Pun intended. <laughs> Pun I didn't intended even realize he played for Cleveland until we started. That's interesting. Project. That's interesting. So you went with Mo Berg just because he was a spy? Just because he's cool. Well, it's good to know that I'm going to win this game here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> you got big bats. Big bats. Okay, now you can open up your uh, package. So I sent right. Scott this package. He had no clue what was coming. I said, don't open it until we do the video. There it is. Open it says, that. Open that. What does it say there? Until game time. Until game time. We are at game time. We are we are announcing the lineup. I sliced it open. Sliced it open. And I had, a, I had an idea he was going to not put the right catcher in. All right. My new favorite team, the Cleveland Red Sox, Boston Guardians. Cleveland Red Sox. Thanks for a great idea, buddy. Four leaf. All right. You got the green tape, which I appreciate. I knew oh, it. Oh, nice. I knew you I were going to put the wrong catcher in. So if you need to make the substitution, <laughs> there you go. It's your own signed copy for Victor I Martinez. It. I love it. I love it. <laughs> there you go, buddy. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Who's up next? Um, I believe it's me. You're up with first base. First base. Now I thought about, a, I could have gone a few different ways here. Um, George Burns was an MVP. Sean Casey yep. was awesome, but he didn't play very long for either team. He's mostly a red. So I went with, where are you? Mickey Vernon. Oh my God. Oh my God. Mickey Vernon for real? Mickey Vernon for real. He was seven so, time all-star, two time batting yeah. champ. The dude yes. could hit. Exactly. Exactly. So I was looking at Burns. I was looking at Stuffy McInnes. Stuffy mm -hmm. McInnes, uh, really good player. Really good player. I had him for a hot minute. I had uh, Wirtz, uh, Harris, and Hickman. Um, you know, it, it, it was, the first base was a tough one for me. And when it came down to it, man, I wanted the bat. Nice. Mickey Vernon, baby. Nice Mickey fun. Vernon. Holy moly, what are we doing here? That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, second base Second base for me was also a pretty tough one because you had some new guys. You had Bayerga. Um, there was um, uh, Hickman. Hickman also played uh, second base for a little bit, so he would have he uh, qualified. And uh, Bobby Avila, you guys remember Bobby Avila, right? I mean, he was mm -hmm. pretty pretty darn good. And uh, took a hard look at him. 
and also Tommy Harper. A lot of people don't realize Tommy Harper. So he was he was up for uh, for picks there, and I ended up going with leaping Larry Gardner. Nice. Leaping Larry Gardner. Uh, and I think I settled on him um, mostly because uh, because of the bat. He was he was uh, a third baseman as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also want to show this too because I have this. It's a really cool newspaper clipping. Uh, the diving third baseman. I mean, I know he's second. He did play second base. So, but the diving third baseman of baseball goes out of the big show. Larry leaves. So it's a uh, newspaper clipping here of Larry Gardner, and uh, really cool old school stuff. So there's there for some of you oddball guys. We got everything in the show. We got it covered. We got new. We got it vintage. We got uh, newspaper clippings. 1925. Pretty crazy. Indeed. All right. What do you got? I went with one of, one of my guys. Carlos. You went for Bayerga. I went Bayerga, for Bayerga. Uh, Not a huge compiler, but really good when he was playing, right? Right. right. Those first five Those years, five he was years. amazing. Dominant. Dominant. He just didn't, didn't go you know hard long enough, right? Right. And I thought you might dig this card because he's flying through the air like that. I love that, man. That's that's that would go right into a special collection. Oh, okay, sweet. That's a good pick. I had him on my short list. Uh, I just, I just went with, uh, I went with Larry just for uh, mostly the bat, I think. But anyway, okay, who's up? Hey, I'm back in focus again. Look at that. There you go. Focus, buddy. Focus. <laughs> Okay, so, Larry, uh, third Larry base. so your turn, third base. Um, yeah, yep, third base. For me, there's a guy that I really, really like, and he, like nobody's really ever heard of him. That's uh, Ken Keltner. Keltner. Hey, I had him I had him on my short list. He was a seven-time all-star, just a really, really good hitter. So that's, that's what I went with. I had him on my short list. I had Keltner. I also had Berger in there because he played third. I had um, I had Gardner there, and I decided to put him at second because he didn't play third. I had um, Avila in, in third as well, but I ended up going with – who did I end up going with? William Ben Chapman. There you go. War on him was a 42.8. A lot of people haven't heard of him either, but uh, to have a 42.8 war, pretty darn good. Here's the back of this card. This is the Worldwide Sports card. William Benjamin Chapman. Now, is this Major the card you couldn't find? 19, uh, 1958 hits, 90 home runs, batting average, 300, uh, 0.302, 302. Uh, and you know what this guy had? Uh, a lot of steals. He was credited with the revival the revival of stolen bases after decades of home runner strikeout power plus concentration. Super bag stealer. So I needed him on the base. And he could hit nice. too. So here's the guy that had an average, an average over 6,500 at-bats, an average of 302, and mm-hmm. could steal bases. Guess who I'm putting at the plate right in the beginning, man. There you go. I'm going to win the game. I'm winning the game, man. (laughs) I got speed. I got power. I got average. I got it all. I got it all. Okay, now we got to go to shortstop. Right. I think this one was pretty easy for me at least. Uh, And I'm going to show a card that nobody has seen yet. And I show everything. I show it (laughs) all, baby. Uh, This is... One of my pride and joys, and nobody's ever seen it. I haven't told this story 100% yet. There uh, he is. This is uh, Mr. Lou Boudreau in a uh, 1951 Bowman in a PSA 5. So, beautiful card. I love this set. There's a story behind it. I just haven't told it yet. 
And someday you guys will get that story. I just got to figure out how to do it. So don't hold your breath. I haven't really figured it out 100%. There's only one other person that's seen this card so far. And uh, and his name's Bowman 1951. Because it's a 1951 Bowman. But anyway. Hey, look what I got. I know that guy. All right, all right, all right. That was an easy one. That was an easy one. It was. He's a pretty darn good shortstop. He was. All right. All right. So I guess the uh, outfield is mine to start out with, right? You all three of the outfield. Let's see what you got there, and then okay. we'll see if we match. Let's see if we match up because I don't think you think we're going to two match up, and I think we're only going to one match up. We're going to see all what right. happens. So this one's the most obvious, and I picked this card because of you. But it's a cognac trisky. Ooh, it's a cognac. That's nice. So Tris I don't think my, I don't think I have that right. one. He he has a Cleveland cognac and a Red Sox cognac. I think I have the Red Sox one. Oh, nice. Pretty sure. Okay. And this one okay. I think is obvious, but apparently not. So Manny. Oh, see, yeah, we're doing things different, my man. All right. So the real question is maybe you are going to win the game here. What am I missing? I don't know. And the third one, this was kind of tough for me because I went, um, I could have gone with Smokey Joe Wood. I could have not gone with Grady Sizemore. But uh, Ellis Burks, man, that, that guy could hit. Holy crap. So I'm going with Ellis. That's amazing. What do you got? All right. I'm going to tell this story. I'm going to tell the story real quick. So I hope you guys are just here for the story. <laughs> this summer, my first national and uh, Scott and I room together. Just got, it was a great time. Glad to see all you guys there. And I made one big purchase. I mean, actually I made a nice uh, Ted Williams exhibit purchase. Right. And, and I made a, actually some, I, I got a Mr. MC second year, whatever. But I made a big boy purchase, and nobody saw that because the night of me going home, I stayed at a hotel, and it was, I'm not sure if it was taken out of my room or whatnot, but the card is not in my possession anymore. The funny thing is, is I have a picture of it because on the last day of the show, we were doing that, uh, what's that, card stop? No. Uh, card score? Card score, where you can take a picture of your card it's, people, people are talking about it's silly because if you can take a picture of a graded card and send it, they'll scan it, and then 10 or 20 other collectors will give it a subgrade, basically, or whatever. They'll say, yeah, it's a four or five or whatever. And then they'll give you a sticker that you could put on the back of your uh, slab as like a card score, special collector score. You pay 15 bucks for it or whatever, and then – as a score, you get money. But anyway, so I put this in there. I just bought it. I was like, check this out. Scott came over. And I showed him showed him this uh, thing. We put it in the card score. And then a week and a half or two weeks later, I got the sticker in the mail. <laughs> and I didn't have the card because it got stolen or whatever. And it was, this is a reprint. But it was the original Mecca folder in an SGC five. It was SGC, right? Or was it PSA five? I don't even know. I, I just, I try not to think about it. And this makes me cry every time I, I, I so I bought the reprint because I was like, I gotta have something. And it was like 750 bucks in a five. Gonzo. So if you ever, I uh, I should put that out. I should put the uh, the scan of the number and everything out there. But uh, if you ever see one in a five, let me know because I want to hunt the number down and see if whoever took it is selling it. I, I have it on on uh, eBay notification, and every time one comes up, I look at it. I haven't seen it yet, and I have a feeling if they're sneaky, they won't sell it. But for a, for a long while, I put it. I registered it in the PSA. I think it was PSA five because I registered it in the PSA database and I registered it as uh, missing and stolen. So if anybody ever buys it and tries to register it, they'll get a flag. So yeah, it was, I, I'm pretty sure it was a PSA five. So anyway, 
Oh, that makes me cry. Glad that you brought everybody up. down. Oh my gosh. Well, we at least we got a story. Really expensive story, but at least we have a story. I wish I had the card because I don't. I mean, I love stories, but mm-hmm. I love that card better. How about this? Uh, there he is, Alex Burks, man. You know, I had one of his batting practice jerseys. That dude was big. He does, it doesn't seem like he'd be big, but he was big. He was a beast, man. He was a beast, and people don't really think Alex Burks is like a, a big time guy, but he had almost fifty on his WAR. And this is, uh, I believe, this is this Tiffany traded card. I'm pretty sure because the Tiffany's, although the traded had the light colored stock too, but I think it's Tiffany. Anyway, shiny. I think it's a Tiffany. Now, and that one was harder than that was harder than he thought. But I put now. Who else was I looking at? So I had Manny in there. I had Ellis Burks. I had Bernie Bernie Carbo. He's clutch, man. Not a great, you know, not a huge, big, well-known player, but Bernie Carbo was uh, was clutch. So if you needed a win, Bernie Carbo was your guy. Uh, Joe Vosmick was another one I was looking at. Uh, Coco Crisp. Did you check out Coco Crisp? Coco was pretty good. And he had some speed. So I was mm-hmm. I almost put him in there thinking, man, I could use some speed on the base path. Um I had uh, Grady Sizemore in there that I was looking at. And I had Trot Nixon, who is one of my favorite players ever because I like just the guys that get dirty. Right. And Trot Nixon was also uh, on your Indians. Mm-hmm. Um, and Johnny Damon. I was this close to putting Johnny <laughs> Damon on. 56 on the war, just a great outfielder. Had a decent bat, just a good you know, good player in my opinion. Uh, but, I, but I didn't put him in. I ended up putting uh, – this is a reprint of an American – uh, Carmel, uh, Joe Harris. Okay. Okay. Joe Harris. Uh, and I ended up going with Joe Harris. Um, not a huge war player, uh, but, uh, had a pretty good, pretty good record of, uh, batting. So pretty consistent hitter. And again, base hits win ball games. And I wanted some base hits. Uh, before we get crazy, we're on the outfielders. We're yep. going to do a giveaway. Giveaway D-H. time. Giveaway. While we're doing the outfielders, and I just talked about my okay. trip speaker, I'm going to give away these two trip speakers. Here's what you guys need to do uh, if you want to be part of the giveaway. Uh, you need to write down in the comments, in the video, uh, a favorite player of yours that played for the Red Sox and your favorite team. So do the same thing. So plug in the Red Sox and your favorite team and a player that played on both. And uh, a player that played on your favorite team and the Indians slash Guardians. So comment uh, both of those. We need two players. Red Sox, your favorite team, and Indians, your favorite team. And comment whatever else you want on there. But that's what we're going to be looking for. We're going to give those two Tris Speaker cards away. Okay. And then we're going to move on to the DH. All right. My turn or yours? Your Your turn. My turn. Well, we haven't seen him yet on my team. Look at this rookie prospect of Manny Ramirez. There he is. With the, with the Bud Light sign in the background. <laughs> so there's my Manny. I put him at DH. I'm interested to see who you're going to put at DH. I mean, who's going to go in DH? Well, I think you'll be proud of me. We got Victor. Oh, you put him as DH. Yeah. So I'll show this one. That's a, that's that could work, and then you get a backup catcher. Right. It's not a bad move. And he did spend a lot of time as DH, so that's that's, how not, I that's, really, not, that's not a bad move. That's not a bad move. I like that to get a backup catcher. Uh, okay. Are we done? I think. Who's we're your? Done. Co- no, we're not. Who's oh. your coach? Who's your coach? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> I didn't think about that. How about this guy? <laughs> yeah, I need that card. I've been looking for that one. Dick Williams. This is actually part of another project I'm doing that yeah. you guys haven't seen yet. Nobody's seen this card as well. Oh, man, I don't have it. Hold on. I got to. 
You got another idea on a coach? Yeah. I gotta do some digging. How could it, how could it be anybody other than Dick Williams? That was my trick. I had to trick Scott on that one. He didn't know it was coming. Surprise! All right. I'm gonna see how good he does under pressure. That's what we're doing here. But I am organized. Took me three days to find that Dick Williams. <laughs> Here we go. Tito. Oh, man. There you go. That's a good one. That's a good one. So World Series trips for both teams. You can't argue with that. No. No. Nice to get a win for one of those teams. but. What are you there do? you go. What Man, what a lineup. We did pretty good. We had... Uh... What did we have out of out of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16? We had like 12 out of 16. Yeah, we had one pitcher, our catchers, our second baseman, our third baseman, I think, and an outfielder. I mean, an outfielder, but yeah, we kind of moved those things around too, so we gained one, didn't we? Yeah. It's a good job. This was fun. Damn, that's crazy, man. I thought it was going to be not going after the pitchers, like wow, but that was that one was pretty easy. It gets it gets a lot harder when you go to the the position players because you had to really decide do I what do I want here, you know. And for me, it was really about average, you know. So it's uh, a little bit of longevity, but mostly average uh, because I was trying to field my team to be base hitters to get just just to win the game, man. Just stack it up there that you couldn't pitch around them. Right. All right. So I'm um, I'm not doing a contest or anything, but I would love to see other people do these sort of things together. Like I'm up for it if somebody wants to reach out and we'll do another one like this. Or absolutely, I'll say that too. If you want to go up against the Red Sox, let me know. I'll take you on. Do all it right. to it. That's all we got. You want to don't sign forget off? to uh, don't forget to uh, do the thing there for the contest and. Uh, as far as I go, I mean, I'll, you guys are open to anything. You better have some good luck from us and, you know, <laughs> collect to connect. You know, that's what we're doing here. And I'm just going to say have an awesome St. Patrick's Day. Right on. Right on.